Now that we have expressions for the kinetics associated with each of these steps, initiation, propagation, and termination in free radical polymerization, we can think about how to put these results together and obtain an overall expression for the rate of polymerization. And one way to think about that is in terms of the rate of consumption of active chains. Because remember that dead polymers, uh, which is the final product, are going to be formed by uh, consumption of or termination uh, of the reaction at the active sites of each of these growing chains. So active chains being terminated either by combination or disproportionation to form dead polymer should be a representation of the rate of polymerization. And remember from when we talked about the propagation step of the reaction, we can express this rate of change in terms of the propagation rate constant times the concentration of monomer times the overall concentration of active chains. So we just need to get an expression for this quantity because uh, this is something that's not as convenient to observe and track uh, as uh, a function of the reaction progress. And one way to do that is what's so-called this uh, steady state uh, assumption. So here we're going to say that the rate of initiation of polymerizing radicals is equal to the rate of termination of active chains. In other words, the rate of initiation is equal to the rate of termination. So new active chains are being formed just as fast as active chains are being uh, consumed uh, to form dead polymer. If we make this assumption, it's convenient because we can then equate the rate laws that we obtained for initiation and termination as follows. Uh, so these factors of two cancel out and we can solve for this quantity, which is the concentration or the quantity of active chains uh, in the sample. So we can get an expression for that in terms of our initiator efficiency factor, the decomposition rate constant, and the initiator concentration uh, relative to the uh, overall rate constant associated with termination. So the next step then is to plug this in uh, into the um, expression for our rate of polymerization, and we obtain a relationship like this. So the rate of polymerization involves some grouping of kinetic parameters times the concentration of monomer times the concentration of initiator to the one half. So this is an important relationship because it tells us how we can adjust the components in our reaction mix. This is what we're adding. We're adding monomer and initiator and how the rate constants of these uh, associated steps all play a role in determining the rate of polymerization. And notice also that these rate constants that are involved in this prefactor in generally are in general are going to be temperature dependent, usually in some kind of a rainiest fashion, but uh, kinetic constants, uh, kinetics associated with these reactions uh, are uh, temperature dependent. I want to conclude just by pointing out a few limitations of this relatively simple framework that we've developed to describe the kinetics of free radical polymerization. And one of these limitations deals with the nature of the termination process. Remember that this was important in the steady state assumption because we use that to equate the rates of initiation and termination, and that was an important step to allow us to obtain a simplified relationship for the overall rate of polymerization. And this is a reasonable assumption in, in many cases, but there are some circumstances where this starts to break down and lead to some unusual phenomena. One of them is called autoacceleration or the gel effect. What can happen is that if very high molecular weight polymer is formed, then that can cause the nature of the reaction mixture uh, to become very viscous and gooey. And so this can reduce the probability of encounters uh, that would cause a termination process to happen. And it is easier to think about in terms of combination termination, because remember, you need chain ends of two very large polymers to kind of find each other and combine uh, in order to uh, terminate the polymerization process. So as the chains get longer, they sort of lose their or their ability to diffuse and probe states that would lead to encounters with um, other chain ends uh, or other mechanisms of termination becomes reduced. And so this decrease 
in these encounters with chain ends leads to a reduction in the rate of termination. And so what can happen then, as, as you can see in our expression for the rate of polymerization, as the rate constant for termination goes down, this denominator becomes small, so the polymerization rate goes up. And that can cause problems because this can sometimes be an exothermic process. So as polymerization rates go up, uh, the temperature can go up. And remember, these rate constants are also dependent on temperature. So these rate constants can go up, further increase the rate of polymerization, and cause kind of a, a chain reaction or a runaway reaction uh, if it's not uh, carefully uh, carefully regulated. So this is something uh, to be aware of uh, that can be happening, but it's not captured in the framework that we've developed. Another limitation is in cases where there's low efficiency of radical transfer during the initiation process. Uh, so again, if, um, if this efficiency factor is small, that's going to cause the rate of polymerization to um, uh, to deviate from the picture that we develop. Because again, our steady state assumption hinges on uh, the fact that the initiation and termination rates are essentially equal. But again, uh, we, you got to start somewhere. And this simple framework gives us a starting point to understand sort of the basic parameters, how they can be adjusted uh, to affect the rate of polymerization. And then from there, we can always add more details uh, as the circumstances uh, require.